Hello and welcome to Simply Technical. I am your host, one of your hosts, Evan. And Keaton's on the end there if you're on YouTube. What's up? Check us out. Video feed. Hannah, don't smile so much. This is <laughs> Hannah. She's the first woman we've ever had on Simply Technical. Um, before she said she was honored. so I am very honored. She's not going to say it on <laughs> on record. <laughs> she was my lab partner and carried me in immunology uh, the, whole, the whole semester. <laughs> so yeah. she's really smart. She's almost as smart as me, but she's definitely smarter than Keaton. So, yes. uh, <laughs> uh, next, we're going to talk about, we'll move into the medical marijuana debate. Uh, Hannah seems somewhat against it. What? I'm just stating the fact. Uh, neutral. I, I, neutral, okay. So she's she sees facts about, okay, there's these side effects that people aren't realizing we shouldn't be using. Maybe I'm just giving a summary of the entire debate and we can just end it here, but not really. But uh, anyways, that there's some – it's not a cure-all is what I was trying to say, and then I interrupted myself. Um, but people seem to be just – Oh, you have this. Okay, marijuana, medical marijuana. That That's what you're saying? Or you were saying before the pod started, podcast? Yeah, kind of. It's a, it's also new. And, like, I probably do not have any kind of, like, background to even, like, probably say anything. But just being as, like, a student, like, we're definitely influenced by, you know, people who are high up and very smart and who have been in this field for a really, really long time. And it's just so new that... You know, nobody really knows what's what's going to be the end result. But It hasn't been tested long term is what you're... It hasn't, honestly. I was looking yeah, that up no. too to ask you a no. question like, what's the research? Have you heard anything differently about it or... No, not really, honestly. Like, <laughs> to me, the whole medical marijuana... I, first off, I'm for it being legalized, so... Recreational or medically? Recreationally too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's just because I'm very libertarian. So I don't really, I'm not. As long as you don't marijuana. drive, then I don't care. Yeah, no, I mean. Or drive a forklift. I'm not going to be operate heavy <laughs> machinery. If it was legalized, I'm not going to be smoking. Like, but I'm just for all that. That stuff. was one of my questions when I yeah. when it, when it got legalized for medical use, which I didn't ever think it would. Yeah. Um, like, how do people drive? I've never. You personally... shouldn't be. You shouldn't be driving because I know it's a it's hallucinogen. Under, you're, right? Well, not a hallucinogen. It, it's like a. It it's alters. Just a yeah. Drug. It alters. Okay. It's a it's a mental altering drug, I guess. But, like, how do you how do people still function? Like, I guess they're was, on low amounts. Is my guess. I mean, you of, can get a. It's not a. I guess is it a DUI if you get pulled over for smoking marijuana, like. Yeah, driving. Around. It's influence, and uh, uh, whether it's influence yeah, of so, alcohol. Uh, like or, but happens. then, how do you you pull out your medical card? What do, what does the police do after? Oh yeah, you're good, bro. You got it. You have the medical card. That's a good know. question. I, I, I would assume there's stipulations with your uh, medical card. I mean, I don't know very much about the whole medical side of it at all because I think a lot of it, like you said, is very. It is not Untested based. Water. It is not based on solid research right now. It is not. It is a bunch of correlative. Rather, correlation equals causation. That's all their research is. It's like, oh, you have you have allergies. Try this medical marijuana. Oh, oh, all of a sudden, you don't have allergies. And you write that down. <laughs> marijuana <laughs> treats marijuana, allergies. Yeah. That's, that's you know what I the mean. most powerful drug. <laughs> the most powerful drug is the is a placebo. And so if you're told all these things, you're gonna completely believe it. And I think there's a large placebo effect with a lot of the marijuana stuff. But I do see the positives and it, it does seem to treat uh some some kids who have um, epilepsy, epilepsy. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i i don't think that's all cases but i'm sure there's so, some cases and i think that we need to figure out why in some cases that's working what's different about their mechanism mechanism of action of their seizures what's triggering their seizures versus the ones that don't work mm -hmm. so i think it's very new i but like on my thing about the whole drug stuff is, is it causing a lot of harm? So that's where it, research comes in. Yes, that's it hasn't that's something done. that we talked about with Dave. Was the cure what it, not cure to harm or I forgot like, exactly what he said. The patient like How? if it harms ten people out of a hundred, then it gets passed or whatever. There's there's a certain with the FDA. number, but like people don't die from marijuana, so that's that's the first fact. So. 
how we talk, what we talked about with Dave was the diabetes drug metformin. So metformin is extremely safe, but now it's be, there's a whole new research side of it, feel, the field that's like, oh, maybe we can treat other diseases with this that aren't just diabetes. It's a super drug. Yeah, <laughs> just like, throw some metformin at whoever. <laughs> that's, the, that's the new thing. It's like, so it's not people aren't afraid to to take it through all these testing because it's already been shown to be safe. But I'm I guess I'm asking you. What are the downsides of medical marijuana that you've seen so far? A lot of it is like people will come in and hear that somebody else said that it's amazing. It's a miracle drug. And then they come in and they're just absolutely. I want marijuana. Yes. They're either like, (laughs) I want marijuana. I've heard that's the only thing that works. That's the only thing I want. That's this is the end of the discussion. And that's what they want. Or you have the opposite side or like people like I've tried it. Somebody told me it works. It doesn't it's work at all. <laughs> so now what's my what's my choice? And they said nothing ever works. And now I... Nothing. Yeah, actually, they've hit all of, like, the boxes for everything that you go through stepwise to treat whatever it is. And they did marijuana, and now it doesn't work. So that's the biggest complaint, is that people say that it, it they were promised it was going to work, but it doesn't work. I've That's what I've heard. That's... that. I mean, that does seem like a huge issue. There's so many lies put forth by the the whole medical marijuana industry yeah because it's all bogus research it is not it is not done under proper well, do you think conditions. people's bias are going into it of oh, i wanted oh, yeah. i wanted medical marijuana pass so i put forth bad research uh i don't know bad research, bad research i think bad skewed, blogging weak, skewed weak yeah. research weak yeah well uh, why has the fda not been testing marijuana before I, you know, I looked this up. I I looked this up and I think for the longest time on why they weren't able to is that it's a, it's was like a scheduled Scheduled. one drug. Oh, really? So like researchers had to get a license or like approved to test marijuana, which is, I don't, I don't know if that's like correct, but I mean, that's. So that ties back into what we said earlier is a level one. Exactly. It was considered a very hard drug. It's a, it's, it was considered, yeah, it's okay. considered illegal. M- misclassified, I guess, might be a good term. Some might say that it w- would be misclassified. It's because it's not like the, the other drugs that it's in the class with. It doesn't do as much harm. harm. Mm-hmm. You know, it does. Like, as as we know. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you know, you don't hear people overdosing on marijuana like no. you do if you had, had cocaine had, like, heroin or, meth- or yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's up there. You don't see you don't see high people in the hospital in the ER coming coming in there at, with broken beer bottle bottle over their head like you do with the uh, drunk people tripping out. Yeah, <laughs> drunk people. I mean, this is why I I am pro legalization is because alcohol is way worse. <laughs> it is way way less safe than right. people overdose. But is that necessarily a good thing? That okay? Well, we already have this passed. This is less harmful. Let's pass it. Is that, uh, is that no, a good? It's not necessarily a good okay. thing. No, but I think if you have one, you it, might as well have the other. Really makes sense. That's that's what's never really made sense to me is. People kill people all the time when they're drunk. It is not uncommon at all. It, and it, it harms your body. It's so bad for you. Worse, in large quantities. Yes. And yeah, for a large amount of time. Worse when than what we know about and... marijuana. We don't know what it yeah, does. We don't we, we don't know what it does long term because it was illegal. So nobody wanted to admit that they were doing it. So we don't have any research of like people who've been smoking it for you know thirty plus years and what their lungs look like or you know what their other you know, what does a brain look like after having yeah. all of this stuff go on? So what I've researched is that you have a loss of IQ at high doses, high doses yeah. for a long time. <laughs> and uh, I know some people that uh, have smoked, they smoked for a while, and they their side effect was it made them not care at all. They didn't care about anything, even when they weren't high. That might just be them, but they were saying, like, I just became lazy. Lethargic, I guess, might be. It's, but there's no, I guess there's not really research on that. No, that's, I will say, like, when it comes to smoking, I promise you, when people are smoking marijuana all the time, it is not going to be that much safer than cigarettes. <laughs> it, I know, that was another thing. Because it will thing. destroy your, it, it's like vaping, like vaping, vaping is safer than cigarettes, but now, now there's a freaking pandemic of I kids, know. I mean, some kids have died, and I'm sure in 30 or 40 years, their lungs are going to be looking terrible, like, you're inhaling a fume that shouldn't be <laughs> yes your lungs <laughs> yeah natural. your lungs are not you're not supposed to they're not supposed to have foreign things in the lungs and so that that is the smoke is something foreign that we don't really know about 
Well, even yeah. vaping is just water vapor, but you're still putting still, chemicals with. Yeah, it's yeah. still chemical. Yeah, vitamin E is a vitamin. Vitamin E acetate is the one that was like killing people. Oh, apparently, really? I didn't know this. On the vapor, yeah. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know how people are. I just see that's, yeah, that's crazy. Last, crazy last thing I heard about Twitter's it. Twitter's like, like ban ban all vaping. Which, you know what? I <laughs> I'm also not for banning vaping, but please like. Why are there high schoolers vaping? That's, that's a whole nother. That is ridiculous. <laughs> whole nother. Yeah. So bogged. Well, it's, it's probably because it became a meme. It's, it was no, so meme. It was so social media crazed that every 12-year-old and their mom wants to vape now. Yeah. No, it's, it, that is really... That is that needs to change in, in the law. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure... We should just ban social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the law we'll say... I, I'm assuming you can't buy a vape unless you're 18 I, yeah i'm, I'm, I'm very that. i'm but very confident that all these but all these, these like 14 year olds are smoking their usb like, in yeah. class yeah it's it's so ridiculous like where are these kids parents <laughs> well there a lot of times they get caught at school yeah vaping. yeah They're, i know i saw an article that said oklahoma city i think it's oklahoma city putting up vape sensors in bathrooms and stuff i mean that's yeah, to that's stop another, vaping i mean another, was it like a fire system tangent. that like goes off i guess or, i don't know Wow. Lockdown. I, I didn't read the article. I saw the headline. <laughs> Just like every typical boomer. I mean, you know what? I'll, I'm going to do what's safe for me. I'm not going to do these things. People people over 21 can ruin their ruin their own life. <laughs> well, that's the thing about I, I both of our stances. I don't know if you feel the same way, Hannah. That do whatever you want. I don't care. But don't endanger another person's life. You know, your yeah. rights your rights don't trump my rights. Exactly. So. It's it's hard to it's hard to be um, I guess more conservative with it I guess I don't know if that's the right word but like you're, when you have a patient who comes in and is like I want mar- medical marijuana it's hard not to be like okay your health mm-hmm. is important to me and yeah. so I want you to pick what's the best but remember it's ultimately your decision you get to do what you want to do because it's your body but it's, it's hard is not to not have educated a educated yeah. It. Because they've been fed lies that it's a cure all, when it's not. But, uh, okay. So like, on the me- just now, let's just talk strictly medical, so like prescription wise. What are the negative s- side effects that you've seen? What if you you talked about like the <laughs> the patients that'll come in? Uh, I've heard like of like one or two stories of the patients who have smoked so much that they have thrown up Oh yeah, and it really is a syndrome. Like you, you smoke so much, you just throw up. Well, that's just, is that necessarily because it's marijuana or just because they're inhaling so much smoke? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Because I mean, I think people do that after like being in fires, Mm -hmm. like they, they throw up because they're trying to get what's in their body out. Yeah. And I mean, sure I, that, uh, yeah. not good for your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> whether like if your house is burning down, you know, and you're stuck and they get you out, you know, sometimes I, I believe people heave, you know, yeah. but it is kind of ridiculous how like doctors and PAs now have their hands tied whenever a patient comes in demanding medical marijuana for their freaking allergies. Yeah. So don't get to write for it. Oh, you, you don't. don't. Okay. So but I've seen it. You've, yeah. Well, we, so we still get the question. Yeah. Why? Well, you're pumped. Why? Why are you pumped? Just I don't so I have clarify. to. Okay. So, because you don't want to give somebody that you I, think I, could I, be harmful. I don't, or I, like I don't. I just don't want to have to have that that talk to them. I mean, like I don't mind having that talk. Like I will, no matter what. It's just like a, okay, like listen, I can't prescribe this to you. So that that's you have like a, you have a a, a a way out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like nice. I can't prescribe that to you, or it's I don't have to make the deciding decision for the clinic, or you know, for my employees or anybody else around me the doctor does and so he gets it he or she gets to decide yes we're gonna do it or no we're gonna do it and then i get to decide who i want to work for if i believe in what they you know mm-hmm. want to do yeah. yeah so yeah that's my take on it but no, i i agree but it it happens too outside of medical marijuana like people come in demanding their pain their pain meds oxycontin and medical marijuana <laughs> was the option to avoid having you know, this whole opioid, opioid endemic of... But now we're having another epidemic because everyone wants... But I mean, yeah, I mean, the, I don't know if that's... Marijuana is probably a lot better than using opioids. No, I'm, I'm, really I'm sure. It work better for its... Uh, for its for purpose? Pain. Yeah, yeah, for its purpose. Obviously, opioids have horrible, horrible other, other effects that aren't just pain. Yeah, and 
it's uh, I've had patients who come into the clinic and they that's what they did they they were like I want to be done with opioids I want to be done with narcotics let's yeah. do medical marijuana and like this is another thing that we I've seen patients and get frustrated with is like there's not it's not a prescription the doctor writes you it's not it does not come in a pill bottle like it does not like you don't get to the you don't get to talk to a pharmacist when you go get it it is every it's the person you trust at one of the weed shops you know right the down the street mm-hmm. the dispensaries that you're they they're going to tell you what dosage you need what milligram is the best for you to start out so what is the doctor really? that's prescribing how it works that's how it oh works oh my gosh so what is the doctor prescribing that. saying you're okay to have medical marijuana yes. so they they are the ones who give you your medical marijuana card they they So it's completely sign. different than any other drug completely you they don't say medical marijuana you know 10 milligrams they they sign the paper and the patient you know has all their information they turn it in you know to the state they have their own little O N A something. Um, they fill that out. The doctor they have to have a licensed physician, you know, sign it, mm-hmm. turn it all in, so they're approved, and they get their card, and it's good for two years. Um, and then the person at the dispensary can say, "You need you need a hundred milligrams a week, you know, or whatever." I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what the prescription rate I, is, but I don't know, like the baseline of it. I know, like some people have said, like you try like half of a milligram or like a milligram or something that's just from hearing you know other physicians say like that's what you should try or they've gone through classes you, you that go like, incrementally yeah okay. you increase but but people are going in and getting prescribed you, know, you just go in and you just try to figure out which one is the best for you but like, that you person is also them. trying to sell yeah so exactly. you have a conflict mm-hmm. of interest of yeah that is a huge conflict and of i interest. don't know I, I don't know i'm not very well i don't have knowledge on this thing if the dispensary people are regulated regulated oh, or yeah, if they, they're they definitely are licensed or like you know certified I, for i'm them. pretty sure they are because i know they're licensed yeah. because you have i mean that was you have big, to get your medical yeah, license card that was to sell the big, but, the big craze about this whole thing like you get to do that and you're gonna make buku's money like i've heard yes. people, the story of like that's why oh, there's yeah. so many that popped up in oklahoma city i after had a normal job eight to five and now i'm doing dispensary yeah that's and i'm making uh, 10 times more money than i did at my normal desk job well i'm sure there are still regulations on what kind of like because that was one of the big things of leading it past was I'm buying marijuana from the guy on the corner, but now I'm buying it from a dispensary. Now I know it's safe, yes. safer. It's not laced with whatever else. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's that's a huge that's, argument. That's the that's big. That's the huge pro argument is people are always going to smoke, and uh, we want it to be people, safer. There's a low percent of people that get something laced with something else, and then. They yeah, because you had these sweet little old ladies who are saying that their hands or their back still hurts or they just still have pain, and they're like, "I want to do medical marijuana." Yeah, and mm-hmm. then they get something bad, but now it's more, no, more regulated, so it's a little bit. The actual product is regulated, but it sounds like is the selling doing... is, is not is not regulated as much as a, other yeah. pers- other uh, prescriptions. Yeah, that's a background I don't know much about, but I just know the process of you just send them to the dispensary and they just kind of figure out. That's what so works. interesting. I didn't know why so many popped up around here. I thought I legitimately thought that the prescription process went through a pharmacy. Like a pharmacy, mm-hmm. and, and I'm I, learning so I've much, guys. So, honestly, <laughs> I have seen so many dispensaries, and I've been claim planning for months because I thought they could only sell CBD products. Like you know, oh. just. And I was like, why does every why does everyone think just CBD gummies my, are gonna? I want my CBD yeah. lotion. Yeah, <laughs> stupidest thing ever. So now it makes so much more sense. <laughs> you just you have your card. You walk in. You can get you know gummy bear, brownie, whatever you want. And oh then my gosh. The um. But if you don't have your card, you you can still buy stuff, can't you? It's just it can't have THC in it, I believe. I yeah, no, that's see, that's why I thought there were so many mm-hmm. non-THC products, and I was like, this many people are buying to get to be able to grow these biz- all these businesses yeah you can still do the cbd um you just can't have the thc yeah if you don't have your card if you have your yeah. card then you can the but the, that's the interesting part don't but the they th- say oh, sorry. don't they say the cbd is like the main mechanism of action for, for a lot of the times you need the cbd for the thc that's just oh, what i've the heard. combo the combination of both, for both is of what to like to work or be effective okay, okay that's what that i've heard because well, because i need to do probably more research because on then it would make more sense just to have CBD if that was the actual mechanism of action because yeah. the THC is what makes, that's makes, what you, makes high. you high. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, maybe when you're high, you think it works better. So, 
I'm sure you do. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sure your allergies go right away when you're high, <laughs> of course. And you have probably, I mean, you're not going to have pain when you're high. No. I mean, opioids get you high. That's a part of the reason you don't have pain. I've seen some very funny videos. I don't know if they're on op- opioids. I hope not. But uh, there's some very funny videos about people being high at like hospitals and stuff after surgery or before surgery. I like those. I save them all on Facebook. <laughs> it's not the opioids that's doing that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the prescription or like your license, it's not regulated through insurance. It's oh, so you don't can't even cash use pay. really. And how so much? how do you get paid? How does a a PA or doctor a doctor's office? How do you get paid? Because you don't make any money, do you? Hey, that's a common that's a common misconception right there about all the medical field is that they're getting kickbacks from pharmacy to prescribe their drugs. That's not not the case. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, I'm obviously you still get paid by the doctor's visit. Yeah. But if you prescribe, marijuana, you, get, you get cash. You get cash. Well, the, 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 the the doctor's person, office. The patient gives you whatever X amount you charge for them to come in. Okay, to so that the they're yeah. Okay, the regular amount. The, okay. The, yeah, the license. But is that under? Uh, that's a good no it's not you if it's cash i mean like cash you don't bill through insurance medical okay. marijuana isn't even regulated through insurance it's just regulated through the state i mean mm. uh, yeah okay, I don't, as it's, an insurance company just, i'm not paying for oh no. <laughs> it's not so, it's not a profitable venture for an insurance company they pay cash and i think you have to pay maybe you have to have taxes on it i don't know the I'm sure you pay taxes at the dispensary, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, sales tax, or and then I'm sure they have other taxes that go, because it goes towards uh, education, I believe. Yeah. So that's good. So we've, I'm we've two making, <laughs> we're making, Progress. I also looked that up too. Oklahoma is like, they've had the biggest jump of like how many users or how many uh, medical marijuana cards we have had, and we are like soaring over other states. So Oklahoma really? was one of the first to that's know the... Uh, side effects the long probably good because oklahoma has been such devastated by or so devastated by the opioid yeah. crisis that's probably play, playing a part and of fat it, people <laughs> <laughs> oklahoma is just an extremely unhealthy we state hit all the boxes <laughs> it is really Love dangerous it. here <laughs> not dangerous but guns we are unhealthy marijuana <laughs> opioids okay so a different subject i don't Stuff. know freaking good food good food good yeah. food yeah <laughs> especially in oklahoma city <laughs> Different subject, but I and you might not know this, but I'm curious. Did they teach you like about how the healthcare system's running, and do you have opinions on <laughs> how bad it is? And uh, I've only how had you like feel about it? a slight taste of what, how kind of skewed it is. Yeah, and I think I'll get full fledged whenever I like get licensed are, yeah. and like start practicing and realizing, oh, you know, this is crazy <laughs> you have to jump through so many hoops oh you have yeah to, you know do everything perfect to get your money back on you know seeing patients but it's that's a whole... it's such a bad i mean i don't have a strong opinion on it because i'm not like well versed in it but as far as i can tell it is a bad deal for the healthcare management team and it is a bad deal for patients because patients it's had their hands so tied and the costs are outrageous and doctors have their hands extremely tied because I, I, the regulation is out of con- out of control. The people who are regulating insurance, you know, probably haven't even sat in a patient room or oh, no. diagnosed something or, you know, have done any of this, but they think the regulations that they're making is probably is, right in their eyes, but insurance is a... Is a whole crazy ball game i i went to yeah, my get my again, flu so. shot yesterday i went to get my flu <laughs> shot yesterday and my insurance rejected it i was like what everybody gets the flu shot it's yeah cause it, it's because they don't want you to you're, natural, you're gonna be paying a whole the, lot more money whenever i'm in the hospital because i have the flu that's the way they're getting rid of everybody <laughs> yeah they want to <laughs> they want more people <laughs> but no that's i ended up getting my flu shot though. everyone that's get your flu shot <laughs> Get your flu shot, Evan. Are you serious? <laughs> I've never gotten it before. Are you serious? Serious. Why? What? <laughs> Maybe we should cut this out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get flamed in the comments for not you getting You should my... be. I should be getting flamed? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't have any of my... Uh, what are those... Uh, what are the, What's that meme with the vaccination? I'm not, I'm not vaccinated. Are you afraid uh, it's going to cause uh, autism? No. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? I'm sure. 
<laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Have you seen actual anti-vaxxers like in the clinic ever? So it's real. It's not even just like Did a you sneeze small on them? subset of people. <laughs> you sneeze Because I, I thought them? this was an imaginary group on the internet that that we oh we faked <laughs> all the. Uh, <laughs> all, I made twelve fake anti-vaxer Twitter. So <laughs> all those blogs were you. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. It wouldn't be me because I what hate. What do you writing, tell so. them? Do you, what do you tell them? Like you're just like. It's hey, I see you're outdated on your vaccinations. <laughs> <laughs> like never. Um, it's. That's decision. whenever you lose me on on pro. Do whatever you choice. Want. Yeah, do whatever you want. Is well, you that would be, be considered forced to be vaccinated. <laughs> that would be considered to harm, harm somebody else's rights. No, I don't care. That's that you're. Harming. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. He's, if you don't get oh, if you don't get vaccinated, then you get somebody others. else sick. Yes. Yeah, so you're harming other people's rights. Yes, yes. And that's. I think that's ultimately like you sit down and explain that to them. Like, you you're know, hurting someone else. Yeah, like, you know, like if this. And like herd what, immunity. Yeah, what we're worried about is like the kids that are like immune deficient or like don't have an immune system to fight off just a normal, you know, cold. Yeah. And then they come in contact with somebody who hasn't been vaccinated, which now measles is like measles kind of a huge is back, thing. yeah. You know, you get that that poor little kid sick or, you know, that that person who's going through cancer or something like yeah. that. That's the sad part about it, but it's ultimately their choice. You know, and here's my argument. Let's say they are completely right in a one in 10 million kids gets autism from a vaccine. That is 100% worth it. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry. That is 100% worth it. Coming from, <laughs> coming from a professor's background, um, she once told me that the age of when autism is, like, diagnosed between, like, 3 and 5, or, like, kind of between 3 and 5, um, that's when the majority of the times you get a lot of your vaccines as a child. And so that's what a lot of, I guess, the blogs have gone to that age group on oh, how, they've, they've, how they've come up that it's caused autism. Yeah, yeah. A, little, a little snippet of information. That's interesting. That's how you skew data to, your, to what you want. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a good example. Also, I <laughs> I want to change what I said. One in ten million, there's w- definitely a, autism is way more prevalent than one in ten million. So I just wanted to <laughs> change that up a lot. <laughs> it's, I don't know what it is, but it's not even. They've already cool. turned it off, and it they're, already way, writing, they're already writing this more up on Twitter. So, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Twitter, don't forget to follow us at Simply. But I guess I guess the argument was like was like, uh, so autism has been on the rise. Like it's more prevalent than it used to be, and they associate it. it. That's my. Argument. That's what I say. <laughs> that's exactly we what I say. We know how to test for it now, and we're just more you know aware of. Yes. What it looks like, because back then we were just like, oh, this kid's just, you know. Slower. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that, but. Uh, yeah. or, well, whatever else there is to test, They're I mean. a little different. They're different, yeah. Now I feel bad that I said that. Yeah, you're a jerk. Come on. <laughs> but, I mean, we just know how to test it. or just know how to. Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, I mean, that's that's what I say. Like, <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever people are, like. I used to get into arguments with people on Twitter because I just I love getting in arguments with people on Twitter about about Nursing. cancer oh. and like how they think uh, uh, cancer the government is like created cancer they're use because more people are dying from cancer now and it's population control I'm like dude we just have more diagnostics now and people live longer the things are kind of comical yeah it's it's ridiculous not cancer. Not no, cancer. Not no, cancer. not cancer. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> Everyone knew Everyone's that we clarifying were what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <and> <laughs> it's, just, it's comical. Like, it is. Know. They're so dumb. And it's kind of sad, but. Just, yeah. What can you do? Well, I mean, besides that educate? goes to the point that if you want to find a specific research, you can find it. Yes, yeah. and research can be so biased. That's why you got to find good That's why scientists. you do your own research. No. <laughs> 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 with your own bias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do well, yes, do your own research. Figure out like everything on on the internet is going to everything on the front the, the, the page por- of the internet is going to say vaccines are great. So that's yeah, the important thing is to find research and to try to find the bias yeah. in the research and say, "Oh, this might be, you know, Oh, there's a conflict of interest here. Yeah. Uh this person's trying to sell more drugs, so they're going to say that this drug is better, you know, or this drug's more expensive." I you mean, know. before too long we'll have Pro- I I believe we'll have way more vaccines as cures. Salmonella. No, no. <laughs> I would love to eat cookie dough. King. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think eventually vaccine like that. I don't know how to explain this. There'll be more vaccines because we've done re- more research. One hundred years from now, we'll have vaccines for certain types of cancer. 
two hundred years from now we'll have vaccine like for most preventative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work in the same mechanism as the current vaccine, which is like a heat killed pathogen or proteins of a pathogen. But it'll be it'll be in that they'll be called vaccines. They don't have the same mechanism. I don't want people to be freaking out about vaccines then because they're yeah. going to be way more common. But yeah, that's my my soapbox. <laughs> that's all another soapbox. Yeah. Are, are we good? I think so. Are you good? Is there any other questions? I I don't no. have any more questions. Anything else that you want to know about it? I think I know more than I've ever known now. So about it, what's your point of view on it now? On what marijuana? Uh-huh. Same. Same. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't trying to change. It. I mean, just, just what I it is not. the regulation <laughs> the way that you purchase it. I think should probably be changed. Um, the truth is, there's like people need to be educated that it's not a cure all. That's the that is the problem. And that's the huge thing. This is a, a little PSA is that like medical people or healthcare people who are in that are like, you know, PA, MD, DO, nurses, NPs, all of it. Like it's our job to educate the patients. It's our job to educate. Yeah. Um, that was the, the worst part when I was a kid. The normal, <laughs> <laughs> it continues for the rest of your life, but it's our job <laughs> To educate these people just to know that they can make a good, educated decision on their health and, you know, make the right decision ultimately because it's their body and their life that they get to live. But, I mean, it's our job to know these kind of things and make sure that we're just giving them the tools. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't think our point was to change anyone's mind that you should not You should never use marijuana. we're or, all in agreement pretty much. Everybody has their point of view. It's a free yeah. country, right, still? Barely. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Whole nother. <laughs> as of, as of uh, November 17th at 9 o'clock, it is. Um, but right. thank you so much for stopping by, Hannah. Yes. It's been an honor. I learned uh, actually quite a bit. Um, I don't know why I was surprised. But I learned quite a bit. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Thank you guys for, for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week probably. Uh, we're going to have Dylan on. Dylan uh, Needham, the Viking MMA. Oh. Um, so that'll come out. That's well, we'll see. He hasn't recorded yet. So, uh, but thanks for stopping in guys. And this has been simply technical.